Gude and welcome to this video, where I will show you how you can run Piper TTS or text to speech on your Microsoft Windows computer. And I got the recommendation or the request in some of the comments that I should show the final result before going into the actual topic. So now let's move a little bit forward and see what you can get. And now let's listen to this one. This is a longer text, just to show you the concept of inputting text in other ways than with echo command. Please do not forget to subscribe to my Thorsten Voice YouTube channel. If you liked what you just saw, even if it's not done already because I'm not in the post-production and what you just saw is in my future, so whatever, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have not done already. Thank you. Before starting with the actual technical walkthrough, let's take a closer look to what is Piper TTS. It is a locally running, privacy-aware text-to-speech service created by the great Michael Hansen. And it runs on small compute devices, even like Raspberry Pi, really performant. And it is included in Home Assistant as one of their TTS solutions. I already created some Piper TTS related videos on the one side on how you can record your own voice using Piper Recording Studio to do voice cloning with your own personal voice and how you use Piper in general. I'll put links to all my videos on Piper TTS in the description box below. But that's enough for the introduction and now let's go. Let's start by taking a look to the GitHub repository page of Piper. Uh, so hop on to github.com raspy piper because piper is part of mike's raspy project and um, we'll move the readme documentation more down later on but let's start by taking a look to the release tab and see the six releases by now and if we scroll a little bit down and take a look to version 1.2.0 we can see we have five assets here and if we take a closer look, you can see, or probably you can't see a Microsoft Windows asset. And starting with this pre-release, you can see we have now six assets. So Mike added a Windows version by this pre-release. But for this case today, I will use this uh, stable release uh, 2023.9.27-1 and we can simply download the Piper Windows AMD 64-bit zip file. Once download is finished, let's open our download folder and here we can see the Piper Windows AMD zip file. Let's move in and just copy that included Piper directory and in my case let's uh, go to uh, drive D YouTube at the moment an empty folder and let's copy the Piper from the download here. Let's take a look to the Piper directory and we can see that eSpeakNG as phonemonizer is part of the Piper download. So there's no need to extra download and install eSpeakNG. And we have super simple this Piper.executable file. And to give this a first try, let's open our um, PowerShell command. So let's move here and open PowerShell. Let's go to drive D inside YouTube at Piper directory, the directory structure. So this is completely the recently downloaded Piper uh, package. And let's simply run Piper minus exe minus minus, no, Piper dot exe minus minus help. And the first thing we see that Piper is running because we can see the printed help output and there are a few required arguments. On the one side we need a model file, obviously, a text-to-speech model. Piper offers multiple languages and sometimes multiple models for one specific language. And we can specify an output file name or a directory. 
And um, to get things up and running, first thing we have to do is we have to download a model. So let's go back to our browser, to the GitHub Raspi Piper readme, scroll down a little bit, and you can see lots of information about available languages and voices. So, but what we need is we have to download voices for any of the supported languages. Let's go for EN subfolder here. So for English language, let's make it US English. And as I've said, there are multiple voices or TTS models available for English language. So let's randomly choose Kathleen. Um, as you can see here by this low folder, Piper offers three quality levels, low, medium, and high. Obviously, the higher the quality, the more compute resources are required. If you just have limited compute power and need fast voice generation, you probably should start with a low model. So in this case, for Kathleen, there is just this low model available. Let's go here. And we need two files. On the one side, we need the actual ONNX model file, which is 60 megabyte, which is pretty small for a text-to-speech model in a really decent uh, quality. And we have the uh, matching JSON configuration file. We need both files. So let's start with the ONNX TTS model file. Click download. And while this is downloading, let's go back and download the JSON file. Let's click raw and Control S for save. And then let's save it in the downloads folder. Once the download of both files is completed, let's go back to our downloads directory. And let's make it a little bit easy. And we just take these two files and copy these to our Piper base directory. So we keep all in one place, but this is no need. You can have multiple directories. So, but for this demonstration purpose, I will just keep all the files into one directory. So we have now these two downloaded files. So for English US voice, Kathleen model in low quality, the model file and the matching JSON configuration file. And now let's go back to our PowerShell command line window. And um, as you might see, there is no specific text parameter to input specific text. This is because Piper takes the input text from standard input. So in this case, we make an echo. Let's make it hello. This is a test using Piper TTS. If I just run this command, it will be printed to the Windows PowerShell command line output, as you can see here. And now we will follow this by the pipe command and run piper minus, no, piper dot exe uh, with the command line argument minus m or minus minus model for this model here. And uh, we'll take the downloaded file name, which is enuscathleen, enuscathleen. And here, do not use the config JSON or the JSON file, just use the onnx file directly. By default, it will take the JSON, um, or it will detect the JSON file automatically because it has a matching file name. And uh, what we would like to do is let's use the minus F parameter to define the output name by default in the current working directory. So minus F and let's make it test one dot wave. So if I run this command, Piper should synthesize the text. Hello, this is a test using Piper TTS with the English US based Kathleen low quality voice and save the result to test one dot WAF in the current working directory. So let's give it a try. That's it. And there's no speed up in the post-processing. So this is the original working speed on my 
Windows desktop computer, which is not the fastest and not the newest one. Uh, maybe I'll add the technical specifications um, in the description box so you have a better idea on Piper's performance. And uh, let's go back to our Windows Explorer. And you can see this test test1.wav file is created and now let's listen to it. Hello, this is a test using Piper TTS. So let me know what you think. If you do not like the voice or the quality, feel free to play around with multiple um, of the voices and the models. And because this is way too simple, let's just for the fun give another voice another try. So let's go back to the Piper uh, model downloads and we stay in the English US based voices. But let's create um, this one here. Here we have all three quality levels, so low, medium and high. So let's take the high model and download again the two files. Again, we will use these two files and copy them. to the Piper directory. Go to the PowerShell and basically run the same command. Just save it to test2.wave and let's use not Kathleen, but instead this model. It took a minimum amount of time more this might be because we choose the first model in a low quality and this model in a high quality. So let's go back to our Explorer. And um, we now have the test 2 wave. Let's give this a try too. Hello, this is a test using Piper TTS. So you definitely get the difference between the first voice and model and this one. So but again, which one you prefer, or maybe you prefer any other model, is totally up to you, so obviously. One frequently asked question is, can I input more text into the TTS generation uh, process? And um, it is possible, yes. <laughs> so uh, for this demonstration, let's go back to our Explorer and just create a new simple text file. So let's make it demo txt. Move it here. <laughs> Subscribe to my Boston Voice YouTube channel. So I hope you get the point. So you can have text files with longer content inside. So let's save it. And um, how do we pass this command to Piper? As I've shown you here, Piper takes the text that should be synthesized from the standard input, uh, as I've made it here with the echo command. And on the Windows PowerShell, there is two ways. This is on the one side, we can run a get minus content and then just run our demo. And you can see that this just prints out the content of demo txt. And um, this might be familiar for most of you who have worked with Linux or Mac OS. This is just cat. And uh, luckily, cat is an alias or whatever. So cat will work the same way. So run cat demo txt, as you see, is printing the same result. And now let's run cat demo txt. Oh, I'm lazy, so let's go up here. We'll run cat demo txt and make it in output file test 3.wave. So if things work right, the content of demo txt should be printed out virtually on the standard input 
no, to the standard output, and then be piped to Piper X, spoken with the English US-based voice, and saved to test3.wave. Okay, so let's hope for the best. Again, this is real time, so no speed up in post processing, so you get a really uh, an, an honest impression of the performance. And uh, process finished. Let's go back to the Windows Explorer. Here's our test 3.wav. And now let's listen to this one. This is a longer text, just to show you the concept of inputting text in other ways than with echo command. Please do not forget to subscribe to my Thorsten Voice YouTube channel. So, okay. And I guess probably that's all. So super simple, just download the Windows zip file from uh, the GitHub repository and um, unzip it on your Windows computer, download the model for the voice you like and run it in your command line. And um, I hope you found this video helpful. If this is the case, as I just said, or as the TTS voice said, please subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, and let me know in the comment box below what you think on this video. And that's all. I hope you have a nice rest of the day. And if you like, we might see us next time. Bye.